الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا وسندنا ومولانا محمدًا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فيا عباد الله يوصيكم بتقوى الله وطاعته إن الله مع الذين اتقوا والذين هم محسنون قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا تمشي في الأرض مرحا إنك لن تخرق الأرض ولن تبلغ الجبال طولا وقال الله تعالى ولا تصعر خدك للناس ولا تمشي في الأرض مرحا إن الله لا يحب كل مختال فخور واقصد في مشيك واغضض من صوتك إن أنكر الأصوات لصوت الحمير صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال حبة من خردل من كبر ولا يدخل النار من كان في قلبه مثقال حبة من إيمان وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله عز وجل أوحى إلي أن تواضعوا حتى لا يفخر أحد على أحد صدق رسول الله فيما قال أو كما قال May Allah's blessings and mercy be upon us We thank Allah We believe in Him We rely upon Him alone We ask for His help We seek refuge in Him from the evils of our actions. Someone had come to visit our Prophet ﷺ. He began to tremble with the emotion of being in the presence of Allah's Messenger. Our Prophet ﷺ approached him and said, Don't get excited. I am not a Lord. I am the son of a woman from the tribe of Quraysh who ate dry bread. In another narration, Abdullah bin Jubayr radiallahu an narrates, one day while our Prophet والسلام, was walking on the road with a group of companions, one of them wanted to protect the Messenger of Allah from the sun with a cover. When the Messenger of Allah saw the shadow, he raised his head and saw that someone was making a shadow for him. He said to the man, you don't have to do that. He took the cover and put it on the ground and said, I am a human being just like you. Dear respected brothers and sisters, Good morals are the most valuable treasure to illuminate the life in this world and turn the eternal life in the hereafter into heaven. We believe that a life can lead to heaven with good morals only. On top of these good morals comes humility that will exalt us in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Holy Quran informs us that the highest person is the one who has a deep consciousness of taqwa, 
There are no other criteria. Taqwa is to be aware of weakness in the presence of the Creator and to lead a meticulous life with this awareness. A person ascribing any superiority to himself, forgetting that he is a servant, is nothing but heedlessness, ghafla, and misguidance. فَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنِ اتَّقَى Do not falsely elevate yourselves. He knows best who is truly righteous. We believe that all Muslims, regardless of their social status, are one body and brothers. No one has superiority over the, over the other. Our beloved Prophet والسلام, with his exemplary life placed this thought in the consciousness and practice of the first Muslim generation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to his Prophet, وَاخْفِضْ جَنَاحَكَ لِمَنِ اتَّبَعَكَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Lower your wing tenderly over the beliefs who follow you. Taking someone under your wing can only happen with a warm and friendly relationship. Our Prophet والسلام, fulfilled this responsibility and those who believed in him surrounded him like an indestructible wall. So how did our Prophet do this? Of course, with modesty, and humility by rejecting any hierarchy between himself and the society by reminding people that he is a servant of the law of his lord at every opportunity by living in harmony with the society rather than in isolation on the other hand the attributes that prompted him to pray to his lord throughout his life was his consciousness of servitude, ubudiyyah, and gentleness. Although he is Allah's beloved servant and prophet, he entrusted his situation in the hereafter to his Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered him to say, مَا كُنْتُ بِدْعًا مِنَ الرُّسُلِ وَمَا أَدْرِي مَا يُفْعَلُ بِي وَلَا بِكُمْ I am nothing new among God's messengers. I don't know what will done with me or you. Humility is the state of being unpretentious and modest. It means adopting a life free of pride and arrogance. It means showing respect, compassion, and mercy to all living beings and treating them gently. Al-Hassan al-Basri, the great scholar of Tabi'un generation, defines humility as follows. Humility is accepting that every Muslim you meet on the way out of your home is superior to you. If we have such a conscience, consciousness, the spiritual pleasure, maturity, grace and elegance that humility brings to the Muslim will spread to the society in waves. The life of our Prophet والسلام, the symbol of hil, is adorned with humbleness and modesty. He would look after his own needs by himself as much as he could. He used to go to everyone homes, everyone's homes, visit the sick, attend funerals, and accept the invitation of slaves without discriminating between the poor and the rich. His assembly was one of the tranquility and the trust. When he got back to Mecca, he entered not with signs of victory, but humbly on his camel and in a sign of gratitude. His table, his table would have been simple. 
He would not dress differently from the companions. He didn't, he didn't want people to greet him standing up when he entered an assembly. He had such a simplicity and humility that a stranger who came while sitting with his, with his, his companions used to be in need of asking, which one of, you, one of you is Muhammad? We are the ummah of a prophet who wants to be called the servant and the messenger of Allah. So how hard do we try to have this beautiful attribute of our prophet alayhi salatu wasalam? How much do we emulate him? We all know that there is a good model for us in the Messenger of Allah. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ Let us ask ourselves, what is our attitude towards simple worldly gains such as rank, knowledge or wealth? Can we stay away from arrogance, ego and selfishness as we should? Are we on the side of submission, gentleness, and humility that is hail? Or do we stand on the side of disobedience, rebellion, and arrogance that is ignorance? Humility, which reminds people of being human, improves servitude and gives flavor to morality. Humanity, whose main nature is soil, should find himself in it and should take lessons just by, just by looking at it. That is, a person should behave in a way worthy of his or her essence. Let us think about soil. Soil inspires fertility, modesty, loyalty, and peacefulness. Accordingly, the great Sufi Mawlana Jalal al-Din Rumi said, in modesty and humility, be like earth. Humility is actually the most beautiful reflection of being named middle nation, Ummatan Wasata. It is a state between extremeness and remissness, or ifrat and tafrit while knowing his servitude and helplessness, it is not to forget that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him a value as, he, as a human being. Someone said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, a person likes to have beautiful clothes and shoes. Is this arrogance? Our Prophet replied to him, Allah, Allah is beautiful, he loves beauty. Arrogance, on the other hand, is not accepting the truth and despising people. The right way for a believer is to stay away from two bad and extreme qualities. One being humiliating himself in a way that cannot protect his rights and the other seeing himself as more important than others. We should know that we cannot achieve any good or gain without Allah's permission and grace. All that we have is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our Lord says, وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَا إِنَّكَ لَنْ تَخْرِقَ الْأَرْضَ وَلَنْ تَبْلُغَ الْجِبَالَ طُولًا Do not walk on the earth arrogantly. Indeed, you can neither crack the earth nor stretch to the height of the mountains. The wise Luqman also gives the following advice to his son. وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلَّ مُخْتَالٍ فَخُورٍ Do not turn your nose up to people, nor walk pridefully upon the earth. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like whoever is arrogant, boastful. 
A believer is honorable and dignified, but also modest and humble. وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هونا وإذا خاطبهم الجاهلون قالوا سلاما The servants of the Rahman, the all merciful, are those who walk on the earth humbly. And when the ignorant people speak to them, they reply peacefully. The principles and values envisaged by Islam and the mentality of ignorance can never coexist. Actually, the sentence of Adam السلام, against Iblis, Prophet Musa against Pharaoh, Prophet Ibrahim against his people, and our Prophet's stance against disbelievers essentially represents superiority of dignity and modesty over arrogance and selfishness. Islam is the starting point of true obedience and humility. We confess our, our absolute submission to the Creator in Surah Al-Fatiha, which we read in every prayer. إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ You alone we worship, and you alone we ask for help. This is a confession of our weakness our incompleteness, and our need for our Lord. All glory belongs to Him. To Him belongs all majesty in the heavens and the earth. If we are sincere in this confession, it doesn't produce arrogance, but sincerity and humbleness in servitude. For those who truly believe in Allah, servitude is not a humiliation, but the most beautiful of blessings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِنَّمَا يُؤْمِنُ بِآيَاتِنَا الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرُوا بِهَا خَرُّوا سُجَّدًا وَسَبَّحُوا بِحَمْدِ رَبِّهِمْ لَا يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ the only people who believe in our verses are those who, when they are reminded of them, fall in prostration and glorify the praises of their Lord and are not too proud. Our beloved Prophet والسلام, informed us that being humble is one of the characteristics of those people to enter heaven. He also informed us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall exalt him humble people on the day of judgment for showing humility for his sake. In that case, it is our duty to constantly reflect. Is the path we follow the steps of the devil? Or is it the way of obedience submission and humility that came to life in the example of the Prophet ﷺ. Let us not forget that the end of arrogance is disappointment. The home of the arrogant is evil indeed. Then let us adopt humility in all the means of our lives. Let us avoid arrogance and hypocrisy, which will turn our world into a pres pr prison and our eternal life into hell. Let us not belittle people or make a face at them. Let us not walk on earth arrogantly. I pray to Allah to protect us from the evil of arrogance and fill our life with humility. ألا إن أحسن الكلام وأبلغ النظام كلام الله الملك العزيز العلام كما قال الله تبارك وتعالى في الكلام وإذا قرئ القرآن فاستمعوا له وأنصتوا لعلكم ترحمون الحمد لله حمد الكاملين والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين تعظيماً لنبيه وتكريماً لفخامة شان شرف صفيه 
فقال عز وجل من قائل مخبرا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ارضى عن الأربعة الخلفاء الراشدين سيدنا أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعلى بقية الصحابة والتابعين رضوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين اللهم انصر من نصر الدين واخذل من خذل المسلمين اللهم ألف بين قلوب المسلمين اللهم أيد كلمة الحق والدين اللهم وحد كلمة المسلمين اللهم زينا بزينة القرآن وأكرمنا بكرامة القرآن وشرفنا بشرف القرآن وألبسنا بخلعة القرآن وأدخلنا الجنة بشفاعة القرآن وعافنا من كل بلاء الدنيا وعذاب الآخرة بحرمة القرآن اللهم نور قلوبنا بأنوار محبتك وذكرك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم ارحم أمة محمد رحمة عامة برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين عباد الله اتقوا الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيبكم لعلكم تذكرون كرون فذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون أقم الصلاة